Thank you for joining us this evening at the Palladium Theater. We're looking forward to playing this program for you that begins with Johann Strauss's On the Beautiful Blue Danube. You may not know it, but he originally composed this piece for orchestra and a chorus of male voices. And it was not particularly successful in this form. And he redid it um, a few months later, and it premiered in Paris as the orchestral version you're about to hear. And that is um, how the piece has become famous. But you can, every once in a while, find a performance of the version with a male chorus, which is very interesting to hear. Now, there's a reason why, there's actually two reasons why I think this waltz is uniquely successful. It's actually a collection of five waltzes, and it begins with a um, beautiful slower introduction where perhaps um, the couples are pairing off. I've explained it to the orchestra that I think the horn says, will you please dance? And the woodwinds go, no, I couldn't. <laughs> da, 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 no, I couldn't possibly. <laughs> De, da, 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 well, maybe. I could. You know, it's sort of this um, nice long introduction that gets things going. But then the tempo picks up, and you think we're entering the waltz, but it's a psych out. Uh, he slows things back down and then begins with the famous um, first waltz that you know. Now, there are five waltzes, and the other thing that I think is so um, interesting about this piece is at the end there's a coda. Coda is just sort of a fancy word for end. There's a coda, it's not so short, because he revisits all the waltzes again. So if you have a favorite waltz, don't worry, you're going to get to hear it one more time before the piece ends. So these are two interesting features about this that I think uh, make it a, a really unique collection of waltzes, and we're very excited to play this for you tonight. Thank you.
Thank you very much. Uh, we have a little stage business here, and it gives me an opportunity to talk about something, a very important topic. It's something that is important to everyone. That is the topic of birthdays. And um, I happen to know as a fact that there are two people in this room tonight who have birthdays. There might even be more. Does anybody have a birthday today? Raise your hand. I know about that one, and I know about that one. Where is that? That is Madam President Marilyn Ward. She has a birthday today, um, and you know what she told me? She told me that um, her family was kind enough to arrange um, taking her to dinner tonight because she couldn't miss coming to the Tampa Bay Symphony. Uh, um, Marilyn, how long have you been coming to the Tampa Bay Symphony? All of them. All of them. Wow. Wow. And so uh, Marilyn has a birthday, and then one of our members in the orchestra has a birthday today, our timpanist, Diane Cerise. Wave your, wave your hands, Diane. And, and how many years have you been playing in the Tampa Bay Symphony? Seven years, seven wonderful years. And Diane is also a um, orchestra teacher in the schools in Tarpon Springs, correct? In fact, we have a lot of educators up here on stage. I wanna ask anyone in the orchestra who teaches music either in the public school or university or privately or is retired from teaching, would you just stand up for a moment so we can see all of the um, educators we have in our ensemble? And um, uh, many of these educators and uh, people up here on stage, they are wonderful players, but they're devoting their lives to teaching in the public schools. And so our Tampa Bay Symphony is a great outlet. Um, I'm saying it's a great outlet. Would you agree, Diane? Diane agrees. <laughs> a great outlet. So um, in honor of uh, Diane's birthday and Marilyn's birthday, I thought it would be fun, um, since we're a little less formal here, if the orchestra played Happy Birthday, and you can sing Happy Birthday to Diane or Marilyn, or if you know somebody else's birthday, you can throw their name in when we get there. So uh, please join me. Orchestra, we're going to do this in the key of D, which means we will start on an A. We'll start on an A. Here we go. Now don't be telling me afterwards it was your birthday too because you had a chance before we started. Um, maybe you forgot. Uh, it's the 26th. So uh, going on to the list, we're going to go on to the list. And before we bring out Mina, I want to tell you something very interesting about this piece. Um, he began writing this when he was 19. But it took him um, almost 30 years to finally turn it into a piano concerto. And it plays like a mini symphony. It has four sections. Um, the first, movement sound, first section sounds like a standard opening movement. It's followed by a slow section. The third section is a sort of humorous capriccioso scherzo, uh, which is very common of symphonies to have a third movement scherzo in the uh, 19th century. And then it ends with a um, big bang fourth section filled with lots of fireworks. So it plays out like a mini symphony. I say mini because it only takes about 18 minutes to get through the whole thing. And the whole thing really works best. It's just seamless. You go right from one movement to another. So there are some pregnant pauses. But I will tell you what I told the crowd on Sunday. If you are not sure the piece is over, it's not over. Because <laughs> this is a piece. When this piece is over, you know that it is over. It ends, it's like 20 fireworks going off at once. You cannot mistake the ending. 
So I just ask for the continuity of list composition. Don't be tempted in a pregnant pause. That you, don't, you don't need to clap there. We know you love us, but um, it'll be a nice arc to go from beginning to end 18 minutes. Um, the other thing I want to tell you is that List played a little joke on the critics. Um, there's a theme to this uh, concerto. And you hear it throughout. And he made up words in German to this motif. And the words were, Das versteht ihr alles nicht, ha ha, das versteht ihr alle nicht, ha ha. The woodwinds go ha ha, ha ha. Um, now what does that mean? Yes, none of you understand this. Uh, he's, none of you understand this, ha ha, none of you understand this, ha ha. He wrote that this was his preemptive strike at the critics because he was already anticipating they would not appreciate his originality in the form of this work and the rhapsodic way which the themes keep reoccurring um, through all the different movements. So now you know a little something. When you hear that motif, you can chuckle to yourself uh, that List was making this joke about the um, origin originality and he was troubleshooting whatever the critics might say. But the piece is a big hit. Everybody loves it and we love playing it with Mina. She's our young artist competition winner and we're thrilled to have her with us. So please welcome to the stage Mina Miovich.
She's good. <laughs> Nina, we are thrilled that you are the winner, and we have a, some flowers for you from Conductor. There you go. <laughs> and a trophy for you to remember us by. You'll have to put this in your bedroom amongst all the other awards that you'll be winning soon. So this is for you. It says Tampa Bay Symphony Young Artist Competition winner, Mina Miovich, November 21st, 2015. And the symphony, the symphony has to thank you ladies and gentlemen for your support because with your generosity and your season's tickets and donations, we are able to give this beautiful young lady $1,000 for her continued education. Along those lines, I wanted to add that the Tampa Bay Symphony has the longest continuous running young artist concerto competition of a performing arts organization in the state of Florida. So I think that's quite an achievement for our organization. Um, I was asked to say a few words um, about pages 22 and 23 in your program. If you actually open the program from the back, you'll find you're right there, conveniently right there. Um, if you read the review, you know I'm gonna push you to subscribe to this wonderful orchestra. Um, I was asked to just remind you that we will be taking subscription orders in the lobby for next season. We're very excited about the programming. We will have Andrew Carr playing the Richard Strauss Horn Concerto No. 1 in the fall on a program that's inspired by forest music and folk songs. And then in the winter, we'll feature our Young Artist winner along with uh, the William Tell Overture and the Spring Symphony by Robert Schumann. And then in the spring, we're going to do something new. We're going to open our spring concert with the winner of our composition contest we're going to start uh, for next season. So we're very excited about that. And Jeff Moulter, the concertmaster from the Florida Orchestra, will join us to play the Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto on that program. So it's really some um, fantastic programs. I want to encourage you to su subscribe, especially since I've got that reputation. I might as well live up to it now. And also, while you're at it, just throw down a donation. If you could help us out with $10, $20, $30, or $50, it'd be a big help. And then remember my favorite motto, just add a zero. Um, everything's so electronic these days, you probably would never know the difference if you added a zero. So uh, help us out. Help out this great symphony. We're looking forward to playing Swan Lake for you. Watch out for me at intermission. I might be down there trying to wrestle you over to the subscription table. Have a good break. Thank you. <laughs>